Samaritz in Switzerland, high in the Engadine Valleys, one of the highest towns in the Swiss Alps and one of the most historic and best known. It is the centre of winter sliding sports for over a century. They have been racing down the mountains here deep in the winter. And as we get into run four of the Bauhaus FIBT Skeleton Women's World Championships, again, we're going to see a fantastic race. Well, alongside me is John Morgan. John, after the first heat today, top three girls still in their positions. Elizabeth Young. Arnold of Great Britain won this the World Cup event here last year. She shows that she's got a chance to put herself on the podium for the World Championships with three great runs. She's in third okay. place. Good, good. But she's got a couple athletes right behind her that could challenge her. But in second place, Noelle Pike is pace. She's currently in second. She finally got through the first curve. She had made mistakes in the first two heats in the first curve. But the rest of her run was flawless. And in the third run, she was perfect. She posted oh, the baby. fastest time of the heat. And she is in a solid position for a silver medal. But the, the lady who is on top of the leaderboard, Shelly Rudman, Rudman, no one can touch the lead she's got. It's her race to lose with 8,400s lead, which is an eternity of time in a sport measured by hundreds of seconds. Well, Shelly looked calm and relaxed this morning. Didn't put too much uh, wild extravagance sliding in. Noah Piker's pace closed the gap overnight from a, a full second to eight tenths of a second. Lizzie Yandel is a tenth ahead of the big mover in heat three, Sarah Reed of Canada, moved up from sixth to fourth. And Anya Huber, the 2008 world champion, moved from 22nd overnight into the top 20. So she will get a fourth and final slide. Nine competitors. Do not. Well, trackside, friends, family and fans are gathering at the mecca of winter sliding sports. And the track, well, you talk about historical venue. This thing was built in the 1890s on the road from Celerina, from St. Moritz to Celerina. Now the track situates right next to the road and it's the same as it's been for 100 years, although it changes every year because they make it. It's a natural track. It's not exact from year, year, year to year, so the track records change on a year-to-year -year basis. But here we are at the top of the track, very quiet, no steering. You have to allow the sled to accelerate. Now watch that left side of your screen. Watch the head come down a little bit of these skeleton riders. Their head is only inches off the ice and they get up near 85 miles an hour. Snake curve, looks like an easy transition. It's not, it sets you up for the big sunny curve. Now this track starts to motor. Nash and Dixon, named after the 64 Olympic Games gold medalist from Great Britain in bobsledding. Now Horseshoe, the most famous curve in the world, exit with a slingshot effect and a telephone. All of these names are over 100 years old. That tells you the tradition on this unbelievable facility. And now the speeds that the athletes face. We're getting near 80 miles an hour in a bridge and a gunner Sachs, named after the famous European industrialist who had so much to do with the St. Moritz Bobsled Club into Martineau curve the finish. Boy, it's some hellacious ride for these athletes with their chins only inches off the ice. They get down a mile and a half in just a little over a minute and eight seconds. And today, just under a minute 10 for the fast runs. Well, we go into our fourth and final heat. And as ever, we go in reverse order of performance. So Maria Mazalou of Romania, 20th after heat three, will be first off. And our race leader will go last. And of course, that means a little extra time to think about these things. But Shelley Rudman, Noel Piker's pace, they've been in World Championships, Olympic Games before now. They know the process of a longer four heat race. It shouldn't affect their nerves perhaps as much as it will affect ours there is Shelley making final adjustments to her Bromley sled and Mr Hollingsworth and the rest of them as well and John this is just a chance for adjustments to finalize the equipment yeah they don't have a pit crew they're going in and doing that themselves and you know you got to know your piece of equipment and I think these ladies know what they're doing at the top of the ice to get our fourth and final heat underway in this Women's Skeleton World Championships is Maria Mazalou of Romania, the 20-year-old student. Last year, her breakout season as a World Cup rookie. Big, fast starter. She needs some polish to really control that speed. You can see her ranking pretty consistent. 5.45, 6.45, 6.45. 
start. She had the 12th and 13th best start times the first day. 13, or the 23rd best start in the third run. That's perplexing. You should be within one or two of your start times from the first day. So she must have had a problem in the first heat at the start. But hey, she made the top 20. And I always love talking about a country like Romania that does so much with so little. They compete in all disciplines. Two-man, four-man, women's, the team competitions, they're always one of the first ones entered. And, you know, they're they're one of the past powers of the sport of the FIBT back in the 30s and 40s. Their last medal I always talk about in bobsledding was in 69 at Lake Placid. But, uh, again, this nation, very devoted to the sport. And this young 20-year-old's got some talent. Well, she had a better start, but the speed lower down is not as good as in her third run. She had 132.4 kilometers an hour. She's just got that now. Of course, she can't drop out the top 20 because nobody else will get a final slide. A 110.8, 1500 better than her last run. So again, exactly what you want every time on the ice. Improve, polish, refine. Yeah, this track, unlike other tracks, It'll get faster in the second run. It's getting warmer, and it's already warm here in St. Moritz, Switzerland. Look at the eyes. Your eyes are looking down there. And of course, it's very easy for us to say at the high speeds that she's traveling. Well, she will move into the leader's box. Ex-bobsledder Paul Niagu helping there with the sleds. Another Romanian oh. standout. And uh, talk about standout athletes who've had a tough day at the track. Yesterday may have been Anya Huber's single worst day of competition in her life. The 2008 world champion never looked close to breaking into the top 20. And today she found some salvation, John. Well, the first run yesterday, she had the fifth best start in the 24th downtime. Again, the former world champion in 2008. I have never seen a world champion fall from grace like this. She was favored to win a medal here. And just perplexing that she had such a bad first heat. Okay, she made some mistakes up at the top of the track. But in the second and third heat, she was 15th and 17th. And her German teammates aren't doing much better. This is... For a powerful sliding nation like Germany, look at this, 24, 22nd, 19th. That's just from a world champion. I, you know, it just, but again, a powerful sliding nation, Germany, they do not accept these results. They've got more world championship medals in women's skeleton than any other nation with nine. They are not going to add to that, even with one this weekend. 5.25 is a good Anya Huber start. And we'll see her among the top half dozen of all starters. Well, the better lines that she had in the first three runs. But you know, I think all three German sleds have material problems. I really think that they had bad runner selection setups. But, you know, this is, this is one of the best skeleton female athletes in the world. And she's back here fighting to finish in the top 20. Only 101 kilometers now. We'll see the fastest up at maybe 103. And 131 again. We've seen 136s today from the fastest girls. She is just not quick in a straight line. It's not a woeful slide, but something Jens yeah, Muller and his yeah, crew of yeah. coaches need to be looking at. Back to the drawing board there. Yesterday in the first run, she was in tears. And, you know, she puts a lot of pressure on herself, but... This is not what you would have expected. Ross, look at her laugh. Give her wow. credit. Here's a good sportsman. She look always has that smile on her face. Yesterday was most unusual. Start. Here, this is one of the best athletes in the uh, in the sport. And she's got the tall, lean, long-legged body. Great. I mean, it's picture-perfect textbook. Look at the lines here. A little bit of toe touch down there with the, we call the rudder. But... I gotta believe it's material, because it's not only one German sled, it's all three German sleds, and she can only laugh it off. Her fan club is down there cheering her on. Just in front of her after the first heat was teammate Katarina Heinz. No World Cup races this year. She's been on the second tier Intercontinental Cup. And she has got enough points to get herself in as the fourth German athlete. She doesn't get the starts that her teammate does. She's a good glider down the track, but. 
She doesn't ever have a chance to really beat Anya Huber either. I mean, that tells you how disastrous this is. This is two Germans in 18th and 19th. I'm glad I'm not a German coach. Well, Katarina's starting 23rd, 25th. You'd expect her to be at the bottom end of the top 20. But with Anya Huber starting 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, that there's no logical reason why she should be out of the top 10. And the weather patterns are pretty similar to today that they were yesterday in the yep. first two heats. You can see she's 6,400s now behind her teammate. Her and her teammate were separated by... Boy, quite a bit of time, 30 yeah, hundred tenths. So yeah. now she, Anya Huber's going to beat her teammate at the bottom, Katrina Heinz, by a second. And Heinz is not having a good run. She might drop to 20th place here. She may not even end up oh, in second spot. behind the Romanian. No, she's got better speed, speed now, 133.4. Well, this is what she, her characteristic of the sport is she's a good glider. Third best time of the run, the Romanian beat her. Yep. By 1500s, Maria Vasilou. Yeah, just be over the coach on the left, the former gold medalist for East Germany in Luge at the 1988 Winter Olympic Games. And he's responsible for the German program with equipment. I'm sure he's got a few questions to answer. Well, I think we'll see a replay of Horseshoe. Her exit here was hard into the wall at the bottom, John. Well, no real toe tapping, but then to the takeout of the curve, she skids. You see the spray come up. That's not a smooth transition. Watch her cross over here. She skids into the crossover. Doesn't come over on a diagonal approach. We will see some sleds that take advantage of what Horseshoe has to offer. Well, maybe Janine Flock of Austria, again, top 10 starter. Needs to find a little bit more speed in the ice. This girl, though, still just 23 years old. Started sliding at home in Innsbruck, the Eagles track, when she was 13 years old. Again, a good glider. I'll talk about different body frames. This girl here is very similar to Shelly Rudman. We're built. Tall, thin, square shoulders, good aerodynamic presence. And the Austrians, a couple years ago when she came out, they had a lot of hope for her. She gets good starts. Look at the eyes there. Good starts. But she's been hovering right outside the top ten for most of the year. They were expecting better. We think perhaps, ooh, big skid as she comes out of Snake 2 into Sunny. You think perhaps when she gets that one breakout result, the first time on the podium maybe will unlock the confidence that she needs to make that next step. That was the pivotal part of the track. Horseshoe, now watch that crossover. She's down by 700s, 98.9. Watch that speed. That speed tells you everything. And that tells me she's going to fall more behind on your Huber. Huber had 101 and 131.8. And Flock's not going to be close enough. Huber could live in the leader's box for four or five more sled. Sleds at least. Same speed as Anya Huber, so she's not going to be able to close the gap. Anya Huber will still have the lead as Janine Flock slips into second spot. Well, Anya's going to at least have a little bit of fun here in the leader's box for a couple sleds. And opposite her, her fan club down on the finish dock, they will be uh, shaking the cowbells and making a bit of noise every time she moves up the order. There's that, that dangerous way to stop the skeleton sleds and that, with those foam pads. Well, she comes from Eagles, which has got a really dangerous outrun, so here probably feels like a bit of a, a safe ride for her. Here's that mention up in Snake into Sunny. Look at the sled is sideways into the take on. Up there where you want to be so quiet with everything that you do. Medium line here into Horseshoe. Crossover. Watch the way diagonally she comes over to get on the take out of the curve. The outlet is where you get off, the take on is where you get off. Bit of a flop off the wall, and Anya Huber is our race leader. 16 sleds to go, Australians lining the top of the track for Lucy Chaffer. Well, she got a much better start in her third heat than she did at any stage yesterday. 15th at the start in the third run. 28 year old teacher from Perth in Western Australia. Well, with the way her teammate, Michelle Steele, is sliding, who's in the top four, you thought Lucy Schaffer would do better, but just hasn't put any single heat together. 18, 13, 16, three heats. So her second heat yesterday was her best run. She needs to do that here today to stay ahead of Anya Huber, the German at the bottom of the track.
huge lead there, half a second. And on this track, you used to say that's not safe, but this track today seems pretty safe. It's not throwing in too many surprises. 100.9 speed at the next clock at tree, and she's the same on this run as well. Little catch on the wall will rob a bit of it. She might lose a little time back to Anya Huber, but I think she moved 3,400. 4900s lead before Horseshoe. She, if she gets down to teens here, it could be close. 131.8 was Huber's speed. No. 132.4, she'll, she'll continue be the to be the lead. Anya Huber may not get a top 15 finish. Second best time of the run, so Anya says goodbye. Aaron Bernotis, the American who coaches the Australian, says okay, Lucy. So she stopped pretty quick. Yep, well, that's what you want to see. The coach holding up the single digit means you're in the lead after your run, means you haven't given anything away. And Lucy Chaffer takes the lead. Thanks, Sally. Hi, Faye. Hi, Barry. Hi, Thelma Street. And Horseshoe, the, the signature corner here, one of the most famous in the world. Yeah, look at the way the lean and the shoulders. Didn't really put her runners out, the feet out, the steer. She was pretty happy with her line. Lucy Chaffer, the race leader from former world champion Anya Huber. 15 sleds to go here in San Moritz, and here is Swiss slider Marina Giadoni, former bobsled brake woman, converted that speed into skeleton. Coached there by Mickey Grunberger. Third in the start in the first run. 23rd in the second run, and then back to normal ninth in the third run. There's her placings, you expect that, but she's a great athlete. Second year on tour, second best start, 527. 3,300s lead over Lucy Schaefer, who's at the bottom. But this is a former bobsled push athlete, made the transition to Skeleton because she saw the door open in the Swiss program where she could be one of the top competitors with that start, but really hasn't figured out how to drive the Skeleton yet. Well, the Swiss lost two great athletes in Gregor Staley and Maya Pedersen, both world champions from the men and women's program, and since then they've been struggling to find suitable replacements in the last four years a lot of pressure on her to perform too because yeah. the swiss press they cover skiing they cover some more skiing and they cover bobsledding but only if the athletes are doing well if the swiss athletes aren't doing well they don't cover it at all they always say there are only three winter sports in switzerland skiing skiing and skiing and you've really got to excel in anything else to even get noticed a lot of pressure on this young lady to perform well so she could take her sport of skeleton in switzerland where it was in 2000 when the swiss won the world the gold medal in 2006 by a Pedersen. Oh, and she comes in a hundred of a second behind. Mickey can't believe it. It was just about in contention. She had decent speed at the bottom, a little quicker than Lucy Chaffer, but in the final corner uphill through Portago, it drifted away one hundredth of a second. She That's can't believe it either. Inexperience. I talked about it at the top of the track. This is not where she's did experience. This is an athlete. Look at the stride. Now watch the transition onto the sled. It's not easy doing this. Now in the horseshoe. This is where she probably lost a lot of her speed. Look at the toe tap. Good high line, but six best speed. Lucy Schaefer with the best. That's why she's the leader at the box by a hundred. So they've come down the track at five miles of distance, separated by the length of your finger. Five miles. Mickey can't believe it. That is tough. Well, next up, we've got three Russian athletes in a row. Yelena Nikitina, the youngest of them, 20-year-old junior world champion, and perhaps the fastest of them. She's had the fastest start in two of our three heats. And just look at this kid go. 17, 4. Look at that toe tag. We're going to talk about that. That's where they keep dragging those. They pound those toes into the ice. There's going to be four Russian sleds coming up. This is the first of the four. And we've been noticing that three of the four are pounding their feet before the first curve, like a chop action, a karate chop. And we don't understand why they're doing it. Obviously, the coaches are telling them to do that for, to try and stable the line under the curve. But I, I, I don't see any of the other top sleds doing it, so I don't understand the technique. Wavering out of Snake and into Sunny. Better through Nash and Dixon needs to get a little more right as she gets into Horseshoe. 
Nice smooth line, low exit. But she nails it all together nicely. 28 hundreds up on our leader, Lucy Chaffer. 98.9, not good speed. The Australian was 100.9. She's already lost three tenths of a four tenths of a second lead. She's going down. She won the event in Innsbruck, but it was only a 1,250 meter track. Here it's 1,700 meters. And this is going to be close. She's lost it. So the Australian is going to pick up another spot. And Nicotina, the junior world champion, finishes in the fifth third best time spot on that run. So she drops two places. And Anya Hooper does get into the top 15. Yeah. But this, watch out. This is a young lady who next week goes to her home track in Sochi. And the Russian, these, these are good start times. A year of polish, she could be a real threat. She'll clearly be the best of the Russians. Now watch this toe tap. I mean, I don't understand this. There's got to be a reason for it. Watch the right side of our screen. Watch, now watch the bang up down. Well, now she's bang. hauling that sled yeah. round like on the Cresta run. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's not steering, that's wrestling. Great start. Seventh best speed on the bottom, though. You can see the, you know, 1,250 meter track. She's the leader. 1,700 meters, she's the third. Well, next up, as Elena Nicotina goes off to get warmed up, is her teammate Maria Oliver. Uh, Nicotina, not quite sure where that all went wrong. A bit disappointed with that, but what about Oliver? Again, fastest start in heat one. Among the top three, 24-year-old graduate of the University of St. Petersburg, a sports psychologist. Well, she's the only one of the four Russians who doesn't do the toe tap here. Look at that, she comes around smooth. Oh. Ooh. Look at her results, though. You talk about inconsistency. Seventh in the first run. 21st in the second run and ninth in the third run. This sport, there's no left in this sport. You have to be consistent. World Cup competition, it's two heats. You can have two good heats, you can walk away, but here in the World Championships of the Olympics, you got four heats. You gotta sit on your lead overnight, and give up the next day and be just as consistent. So it's a little bit different challenge, the World Championships of the Olympics than the World Cup format that the athletes are used to. Well, that tells you everything that we've seen in the last few years with Maria in the World Cup is that she can't get the consistency together on a regular basis. And once she does, She's, she'll be a threat she's a powerful Russians. athlete, very much like Lizzie Yarnold, size, like well Pike is pace. Both those athletes are in second, third. She doesn't have the experience in the sled. Good impressive starter. Lost a lot of time back here on the bottom. Boy, she had a 7500s lead next to the horseshoe. And that's down at three tenths, but she's the leader on her, on her athleticism at the start. Well, Lucy Chaffer came down at 1 minute 10.4, 1 minute 10.9 for Maria Oliver. No wonder she looks a little bit fed up with that. Big skids out of kink one, not a great exit from Horseshoe. Kid, the sled was just skidding under her all the way down. Doesn't look happy. Start, good athleticism here. Now watch the, on the sled, now watch. You don't see her feet tapping at all here. Because the next sled coming up will. Into horseshoe, how much control? A lot of body steer, and the left foot comes down like the rudder on the crossover from horseshoe into telephone. Not a bad transition, not great speed, but she is the leader. Well, at least momentarily, teammate Svetlana Vasilieva next up. And uh, Vasilieva, 11, uh, 2010 11, took a, a season out to uh, start her family after getting married. She seems to be really rocking. We haven't seen much of her in the World Cup this year. Well, this is the third Russian sled. We're going to see some the karate chop here at the start of curve one. We saw it out her in the first three heats. There, there, look at that. I don't understand that. I don't get it. Well, it can't be comfortable on the toes more than anything else. Exactly, but I... I... You know, they must be being taught by the Kirov Ballet or something. They want to get them up on point. So that is a strange ex exit or entry into that curve one. That may be their way of getting into the curve without losing too much time. And if I could see another one of the top competitors doing it, Martin, I could agree with it. But well, if anybody in the top six was doing it, you'd be going, yeah, okay, they got a point. But if you're down in 16th and you're doing it, okay, maybe it might not be working for you. So there will be a Russian in the leader's box at the end of this run. 
And she's a little bit behind from the start. Speed. Now she's driving herself into the lead. Better speed than Oliver. Yeah. She's got the experience. Sliding, again, took a couple years off to have a baby. And she's one of the, the top two athletes in the field. They're both mothers. So you can be a mother and still come out here and do this sport. The top two in the leader box are uh, both mothers that travel with their yeah. with their families though. One thirty-three on kilometers an hour, decent speed. So she'll open up a big, big lead please. over Maria Oliver. Well, that showed some experience there. Well, again, Maria one ten point nine. That was a one ten point three slide from Svetlana. Thirteenth and twelfth in the first two heats, then ninth in the third heat, and she could move up again. That was a great run. She was 12th overnight, uh, 12th rather after heat three. She could move into the 10. The Russians have three of the four top start slot to start times in the competition, which if I'm the rest of the world, I'm nervous about that. Look at the lines here. Those are pretty good lines. <laughs> you know, that, that's why. Look at the, that body movement on the exit of Horseshoe. And that's her experience. She's yeah. the, the most experienced of the Russian girls. The next up is Kashi Haresh of Canada, 28-year-old, now living in Calgary, originally, originally from Brandon, Manitoba. Same part of the world as John Montgomery. Those are the knives, the spines in the back of the groove of the runner. The runner is highly polished, tubular, and that is the only steering device that the runner possesses. Here we go. Press to run there, a big 90 degree gouge cut in the sled because it's a much heavier sled. Here, a little bit more finesse. Not a very good start. 22, 21, 21 in the first three. There's her where she finished in the three heats. 546, pretty similar to what she's done. For her first year on tour, she's done pretty good. She's had a really good season. You know, once we left North America, every town, every hotel room, every meal, every track was brand new. So it's such a learning curve. Yeah, especially late in the year. You know, your body gets run down late in the season. Much like you talk about football players in that little event they call the Super Bowl. Those a lot of those guys late in the season are all beat up. And it's it's like I always say these sports are to me always favors like a decathlon because the decathletes are familiar with their bodies into the 10th tenth event of over two days for a decathlete. Yeah. Now. Is she going to start to close? She lost time to Svetlana Vasilieva at the top of the track. She was out to three tenths back. Can she close a little? Svetlana, 133-0. Long slide from Cassie Haresh. And she's trying to tidy the line up here. 134 she needs. 134 she's just about yeah, got. Will she it. close at the line? She'll still be behind by a fraction. Falls back one, but I think Vaselli had a great, great, great run. She's going to move up yeah. at least one more, I think. Well, the other thing for Cassie is she had six runs in training. That's her tenth trip in total in her life down this track, and she's a whisker outside the top ten in the yeah. world. Great result. The Canadians are pretty good at this sport, though. Right here, the left side of the wall going in, forces her to get up and touch the roof in Horseshoe. Look at these lines. Not too many people up there on the roof. Does she panic? No, she, she does stayed. not. Well, nerves of steel. Yeah, got to have them. Good young athlete there for Canada. Ten sleds to come here in the final heat of the Bauhaus FIBT Skeleton Women's World Championships. Svetlana Vasilieva of Russia, our leader. And we will decide the gold medals after this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sam Ritz in Switzerland, final 10 sleds in the Bauhaus FIBT Women's Skeleton World Championships when we decide the medals. 10th place after three of our four heats is Russia's Olga Potilitsina. Broke into the World Cup last year with victory in race one of the season. And has not managed to repeat that form yet. Well, watch the chops. Here she does it. Bang, bang. There's two of them. And that second one slid. Uh, she doesn't get as good a starts as the other three Russian athletes. But again, she had that great success at the Eagles race at the beginning of the 2011-12 season. Hasn't really got on top of the podium set. Finally, you mentioned Eagles, you know, the Russian girls seem to go very well there, whereas the British girls seem to go very well here in Samaritz. So, what's Sochi going to be like? I think Sochi's going to be like Eagles. Okay, no be, longer, yeah. it's, it's longer. Sochi's got three uphill sections, and Sochi's got these Russian athletes going down in a lot more than anybody else. So next week at Sochi, at the Olympic test, in two weeks, we're going to see how good these Russian athletes are, especially with the start time efficiencies that they've got. Olga with a fraction more speed than her third heat. She had 132 kilometers an hour at the bottom. We've been up to nearly 134 to hold her lead. Losing a little time back. Should be the leader. A lot of Russians on top of the leaderboard now. Yeah. And she takes the lead from her teammates. They are Svetlana Vasilyeva leaves the leader's box. On 10.42 slide, again, about a tenth of a second better than her last run. And, John, the weird thing about this natural track is it tends to speed up as yeah. the day progresses rather than slow down. Yeah. But the temperatures have been so warm here, and I think it's really affected the competition. Good technique at the start. Watch how quickly she gets on. She ran through that start a little longer than I've seen. Good high line there. A little bit of a tap. Third best speed, and considering the other two athletes that came down before her, mm -hmm. that's that's why she's the leader on the bottom. Olga has the lead with nine to go. Marion Thies has never made a podium in an international level race in Samaritz. Best she's got was fourth in 2009. She lies ninth, and she is the best German slider in the World Championships. Very perplexing. Very, very perplexing. Well, just for a change, Germany not dominating as they have so many years in so many different disciplines here in Samaritz. Marion's weakest point, she's just got over with. That's her run. Eighth, ninth, and ninth. And this is one of the best speed merchants in the world. She gives up an unbelievable amount of time at the start, but always finds time on the bottom. But as I said, all the German sleds don't have great speed on the bottom part of the track. And I think that deals with material. Runners set up. Well, like their bobsleds, they're built by the FES concern in Berlin. And like their bobsleds, they're never going to remain static. There will always be development work. And yeah, that message will be uh, very evident to FES, I should think. She's gone from 1100s at the start to 4300s back. 3300s down, speed to left, 101.7, good speed. 3300s is a lot to overcome here on the bottom part of the track. If anybody can do it, it's this athlete here, down to 21. Now, she gets the best speed here in the bottom. I think she's going to get it down to single digits, but I think she's going to run out of track. Well, she was two tenths of a second ahead of oh, Olga she's done it. and she Look at will the speed. come back. She's done it. This is one of the very few athletes in the planet can take a deficiency and do that on the bottom part of the track, and that's Oh. That's why I call her a speed merchant. She just has that ability to glide at high speed. If she it was the last start 500 time. meters that saves her, isn't it? Yeah, that, if, you know, 1,700 meters, she needs it. Sochi might favor her. She's going to give up a lot of time at the start. But Sochi's a high-speed track, and it's long. So she might have a chance there. For downhill sport, she's really good at the uphill bits. Boy. Perfect form. Textbook. You want to know how to ride, drive a skeleton sled? 
Watch this. Look at the speed. Yep. Almost a kilometer better than anybody else. Wow, yeah. I don't know if anybody else can match that. Maybe Noel Pike's pace might get there, but speed merchant. Marion Tees, our race leader. Well, she's held off Olga Potilitsina. She was only four hundredths of a second behind this girl, New Zealand's Catherine Eustace, who lies eighth after the third of our four heats. And the Kiwi at 37, the oldest woman in the field from Wanaka in the South Island of New Zealand. And a trained physiotherapist. She's won at Intercontinental Cup level, the second tier, never in a World Cup or World Championships. Sixth in this event last year, a World Cup two-heat race. And she's the first of seven straight English-speaking nations coming down the track. New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Great Britain, and the United States. Oh, that's not good. That is going to make it very difficult for her to stay ahead of Marion Thies at the bottom of the track. But, you know, when Skeleton first came out in the 90s, it was the England, it was the Great Britain and the Canadians and the Americans who really embraced the sport. And the Australians and the Kiwis came in, and they've been good at the sport. And it just amazes me that the Germans haven't embraced it as much. Well, the sport of skeleton is very small and self-contained for the athletes and you can really identify and uh, use your money well she's down on speed to marion t spy two kilometers an hour this could be reeled in could be red numbers in that finish curve t will move up into the top eight i think she'll be in the red there now is. she is 132.62 two kilometers an hour down marion t will stay in the leader's box as Catherine Eustace slips what out oh, two That's places. The time of the run. Her mistake goes up at curve one. You bang on the wall up there above, you know, above the second curve, you have no chance. That will be a top ten finish in the World Championships for Catherine Eustace, the sole New Zealand slider in the women's game. Too bad, too. She's been doing good all week. She expected better. Sixth in the World Cup here last year. Disappointing. Starts great. She's tall. Athlete, oh, she overshot her load there. Yep. The foot came out, it might have touched, but here's the mistake. This is how not to do it. But when you get skidding here, you see how rough the walls are, because they're hand-built. They can just ping-pong you all over the place. And she drops from eighth over ninth to 10th position, uh, likely, at the end of this race. Katie Ulander, the defending world champion, won her title on American ice in Lake Placid, New York, last year. The girl from Breckenridge, Colorado, narrowly missed out, going as a weightlifter to London 2012 as well. So a multi-discipline athlete. But disappointing at the start. She won the world championships last year with one of the best start times of the competition. Here she's got the 10th best time in this heat. I, I didn't get a chance to ask her, but I think she must be injured because she always has a better start than this. And she was fourth in the first heat and then slipped to seventh and seventh in her down times in the second and third heats. She was 800 ahead of Catherine Eustace, only 1,200 up on Marion Tees, our race leader. Katie's time still in the green, and her start advantage over Marion has le leapt her into a 1.4 second lead over the German girl. Scratching. Katie doesn't have the greatest form down the track, but her form is fast. Good speed there. Again, won the World Championships last year at Lake Placid. Won a medal here at the World Championships in 2007. One of the top competitors week in, week out. She might make the top six as well. This is a good-looking slide from Katie Ulander. 134.4, best speed, speed apart from Marion Thies. So she will have the lead over the German. That's a good slide. 110.05. That's four tenths quicker than anyone else has managed so far in this second heat. A lot of speed going into these cushions, pads that stop you. Zach Lund, he was coach, former World Cup champion in the sport of skeleton, helps her with the sled. Katie, you might have a chance to move up. That was a good yeah, run. That was a good run. Watch these lines here in the horseshoe. Get the bus out the way. Toes. Not Bad at second all. best speed on the yep. exit of horseshoe. This is a good run for Katie Ulander. Down on the bottom part of the track. Now watch these lines. And again, she's got to stand behind Marion Tees. 
But those are great lines. Katie Ullander, I think that was her best heat of the four. And that puts pressure on the girl who is in sixth position, and that is Australia's Michelle Steele. The 26-year-old sat out last season. She trained as an occupational therapist. I beg your pardon, Melissa Hollingsworth is next up. She was in sixth place. Michelle Steele will be next on the ice. So, Katie Ulender of the USA, 600s behind Melissa. Two very experienced sliders. And the Canadian stay in her top six position. Melissa Hollingsworth has finished second three times to Shelly Rudman alone on this track. I think she was second one other time to Maya Patterson. As you talked about experience, this is it. Look at the Darth Vader shield. Some people are wearing shields that you can see their eyes. She's one of the first athletes we've seen with the dark shield, but I'm sure, you know, you're going in and out of the forest here, in and out of these shades and sunny curve, and the light is bright, dark, and I'm sure this gives her more of a consistent. And unlike the artificial tracks, there's a lot of white around the track as well, so it's a constant glare. Speed, 101.7, not as good as Katie Ulander, but she's got 1800s in the bank. She maintains these lines. She might drop back a tenth. That she's holding that line. So this will be the leader at the bottom. I can say that because she's got as much experience as anybody in the field. 134.4 for Ulander, 134.8 for Melissa Hollingsworth. So she will get that top six finish, just holds off the American who is, for the next 10 minutes, the world champion. Yes, buddy. Yes. Top six. The Canadian coach is looking happy with that. They've still got one girl to come. There may be another chance of a medal. Not easy to stop these things. Start very, very, not only great athlete, very, very consistent in everything she does. But of course, when you do it for 16 years, you get a little bit of habit, a little muscle memory. Look at the form. Little video on how to do it, right here. Watch the crossover, quiet, perfect lines. And that's why she is the present leader. Marissa Hollingsworth leads from Katie Ulender. Both have three world championship medals. Can they add to them here in Samaritz? The women's skeleton trophy awaits our winner, Michelle Steele of Australia. Fifth over the first three of our four heats, six hundredths of a second, an advantage over Miss, uh, Melissa Hollingsworth of Australia, Canada, our current leader. Two-handed start. The only athlete in the field with the old two-handed start. And start speed in the left 54 flat that's great and you talk about diminutive this is the smallest athlete in the field and she is shaking her head Mark. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah Reed coming up yeah, Sarah but, Reed but she gives an inch away I think Sarah though has got a few more pounds on her but again you know we talk about different body shapes you've got uh, these two girls some of the, the petitest women you'll find you've got taller athletes like our top two Noel Piker's pace and Shelly Rudman, almost any body type works if you can slide ice. 1400s, 101.3, not the speed that Hollingsburg had. Well, the gap was tiny, 600s of a second. Quicker start for Michelle Steele, kept her out to 1400s, down to 900s. Oh, Melissa, 134. Oh, it's a skid there. She needs 135, got hasn't got it, she's going behind. This is not going to be, Keeper, she's struggling there too. Trying to get the line right through Martino and Portago. Oh, best time. And Melissa will make it into the top five, she's getting closer. Eric Bonotis, former US team, athlete coaching the Australians. Still top six finish from Estelle, Michelle Steele and the Australians. Absolutely. Not bad. Well, for a girl who didn't slide at all last year, it's a great return to form this season. Here's where she starts to struggle a little bit. Now she had a lead here, but look at the skid. High part of the track into the take out of the curve and now down to the speed part of the track. Even here in the finish, you're going uphill right here. And she toe, toe taps out of that. Didn't lose by much, Martin, but some mistakes on the bottom part of the track. And look at the coach, he knows. Yeah. Painfully close, 1,300s behind. And there's Hollingsworth offers her congratulations and commiserations. Four to go.
Canada lead. Canada will lead after this run. And here is one of our fast starters, Sarah Reed. Five foot two. Eyes of blue. And a great start from the 25 year old. 13th best start in the first run, second best start in the second run, fourth best start in the third run, and she moved up from sixth to fourth. She puts a good one down here. She can challenge Elizabeth Yarnold for a medal. 526. Watch the speed in the left. 54 and change. 54-4. That's the best speed that we've seen of anybody in the first heat or this heat. And Look she how straight she comes towards us, John. She had the bad first run, and the second, third, and fourth run. In the World Cup, she had no chance. In the World Championships, three consistent runs could give her a chance to get on the podium. So she's opening up her advantage. Four tenths up on Melissa Hollingsworth. For Sarah Reed, though, it's not about beating her more experienced teammate. The medals are dangling tantalizingly a few inches in front of her as she gets to horseshoe. Oh, that's a mistake there. Take on the uh, good speed. Telephone. One, two is not the speed of the sled. She's going to lose time back. She's back. only a tenth behind third place after the first three heats. That mistake in the exit horseshoe, I think, might cost her the bronze medal. She needs 134s. She gets 134s. She is in with a chance of a medal. She will lead over Melissa Hollingsworth with three sleds to follow. Fastest time of the run. Leader at the bottom. Nice. <laughs> top four finish. Canadians got two sleds in the top five, no matter what. The Canadian coaches looking happy with that. They know that is a challenging run from Sarah Reed. Great second, third, and fourth runs. 13th best in the first heat. She moved up to sixth in the second run, fourth in the third run, and who knows how far she's going to come up now. But here I think she makes a mistake. Watch the left side of the screen. Tap, little ice spray. Doesn't seem like much. Look at the coaches. Duff Gibson, the Olympic champion from 2006 on the right, looking on. Sarah Reed, great world championships. There are your leaders, Sarah Reed and Melissa Hollingsworth, with their teammate three to go. So now this could be a very big day for British Skeleton for last year's race winner here in Samaritz, Lizzie Yarnold. Last year's junior world champion. She lies third after three of our four heats. A girl from Kent on the brink of a major breakthrough. Just 23 years old, sliding for three seasons. Her Blackrock sled named Mervyn under her. She just controls that first corner slide. 54.0. Remember Sarah Reed, 54.4. Four tenths of a kilometer doesn't sound like much, but in a sport measured by hundreds of seconds, it is. Started a tenth ahead of Sarah Reed, but 1,200 slower, so she's in the red. She has got to drive for this gold medal. But she does medal. have that ability to glide. We talk about talent on a sled. This is what the British coaches tell us. This girl here has got natural talent for gliding, much like a that we saw from the German. Still behind a horseshoe. Needs a good exit here to find the speed. Needs 101. She's got 101 zero. It's going to be very close. She's still behind. A tenth of a second back. Lizzie Arnold. Ah, she's lost it back more. She can find the speed if she relaxes onto the sled. 134.5 at the bottom for Sarah Reed. 134.3 for Lizzie Arnold. If she can find it uphill, she'll be in the medals. If not, Sarah Reed could have produced Third the biggest run. run. And what she needs, 110.04 for Lizzie Arnold. Not quite enough. Andy Schmidt, Mark Wood, the coach is there. It's not over, but it's not guaranteed a medal. And Lizzie will be a little upset with that. Yeah, fourth place, though, in her first, really, her world championship. Uh, last year was at Lake Placid, but fourth place here is not bad, and this is the way things end up. Look at the little toe tap. Six best speed. You know, I saw her at a curve one. She drifted a little bit at a curve one from right to left, and I think she lost the chance to have the ma magical number down below. Well, her mom and dad, her sister and boyfriend are at the bottom of the track, just in the background there. Lizzie Arnold is in second. Sarah Reed leads with two to go. We have a 2007 world champion on this track. Next up from the USA on her individually built New Quest sled is Noelle Piker's pace. She holds the track record here this year, John. She set a blinding run in the team contest. She needs that speed now to win gold.
She had problems in the first two heats and curve one. And watch her get around here if she can get around without tapping here. She did. The first two heats, she did not negotiate that curve like that. When she set the track record last week in the team race, when the USA won the team competition, she was the one that delivered the goods. She was 8,400 better than any other skeleton athlete, and that gave the USA the chance to win that gold medal. But the first two weeks today, she had problems, and that's why Shelly Rudman had a one-second lead over her. She was seven tenths ahead of our current leader, Sarah Reed of Canada. She's now four tenths in front. That's relative to the start time. Noel gives up time with the start. Ooh, she's on the left side again. But she crosses over great. Watch the speed. 1023. Well, this might yet be a challenge for the gold medal. She was eight tenths off gold Whoa. after three rounds. Now she's accelerating away. This is the type of heat you expect out of her. She had the best time of the third run. She did. 136 kilometers an hour. Oh, she's one, right there. 135.9. She is flying. You can hear the screams at the bottom of the track. Big hit on the wall. She won't care. 109.69. She's in the medals. The 2007 world champion in Samaritz is guaranteed at least a silver in 2013 in Samaritz. You know, I criticized her first two runs yesterday for tapping the wall at curve one. She didn't do it today. A mother of two and one of the fastest athletes in the world in this sport. Perfect line coming out of Horseshoe, the crossover. Noel Piker's pace is in the leader's box. And for Great Britain's Shelley Rudman, a wonderful opportunity. Richard Bromley, the sled builder, holds her sled on the ice. And Shelley, last year's overall World Cup champion, Olympic silver medalist in Torino in 2006. This is her greatest chance to become a world champion. She leads by eight tenths of a second after three of our four heats. Pay attention, Sheffield. This could be huge. Great athlete. Been doing this for a long time. This is her race to lose. Friends and family in Pusey in Wiltshire, her hometown, will be watching as well as all her athlete friends in Sheffield. 5.42, same starts as she's been producing all the way through. 53.6, good momentum. It's between her and Noel Piker's pace. Yeah, we really like to know the mindset here. The coaches said, why don't you take a conservative line? You know, she might have said back to him, I don't know a conservative line. And the way she has slid in the first three runs has been... She's been dominant. Yesterday was ridiculous. She had a one-second lead. This is the last big albatross she's got is right here, and she's just about perfect. The line was good. Speed's not as good as Noel Piker's pace. It doesn't have to be. She was nine tenths up. She's still got nearly eight tenths of a second advantage. It's coming down. Noel Piker's pace, 135.9. Last time down, Shelley, 135.8. Gold medal for Great Britain. She will take Take the gold medal, the first ever Women's Skeleton World Championship gold medal for Great Britain goes to Shelley Rudman. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice indeed, says Richard Bromley. Her partner, Kristen, will be racing later in the first heats of the men's race. Right behind me, commendable sang froid from the chairman of British Skeleton, Lord Clifton Rottersley, as he witnesses Shelley Rudman taking the gold medal. Well, that is the first time that Great Britain has won a gold medal. That is the fourth World Championship medal for British Skeleton Sliders. And the first time here. And it is her fourth win on this track in five seasons. Well, <laughs> I don't know how she's not choked up because I certainly am. The 2013 Skeleton Women's World Champion is Shelley Rudman from Great Britain. A one-second lead overnight. Noel Piker's pace 
reformatted her plan. Version 2.0 brought her close in run three and close in run four. The margin of victory, six tenths of a second nearly for Great Britain's Shelley Rudman. And the Havanas may well be lit in a few moments as she celebrates one of the biggest days of her sporting career. Confirmation then after four heats of the Bauhaus FIBT Women's Skeleton World Champions. The champion is Shelley Rudman of Great Britain. Noel Pike has placed the 07 champion here, takes second. And Sarah Reid, what a great second day from her, vaulting up from sixth place to the bronze, just easing out Lizzie Yarnell to fourth place, ahead of Melissa Hollingsworth and Michelle Steele. Outgoing champion Katie Ulender seventh. And the top German slider, Marion Thies, just hanging on in the top ten in eighth place. The Russians looking fast and threatening. Well, some moments of tension undoubtedly going into the final run for all the front runners. And uh, great congratulations to British Skeleton, their first ever World Championship gold medal for the women. Kristen Bromley, Shelley's partner, won the World Championship back in 2009 when he won everything else as well. The Europeans, the World Cup title, and last year's World Cup titleist Shelley Rudman has claimed the World Championship crown this season. Lots of friends and family of the athletes, lots of uh, kids around and about the track as well. Great, knowledgeable crowd here in San Moritz. Well, let's get down now and hear from our top three. With them is our John Morgan. Champagne is uh, provided instead of flowers here to the athletes. Good there. And, Thank you. and of course, the big champagne goes to Shelly. Okay. Can I help you? Good. Okay, now we go to the interviews. Sarah Reed, uh, great comeback. Uh, boy, 13th best in the first run, and then you just moved it down. Did you think you had a chance after the first run yesterday? Um, I didn't know. I didn't have a great start to the uh, races, but I had three really consistent runs after that, so I certainly hoped that I had a chance. Congratulations. Thank great, you. great comeback. Now over to one of the two mothers uh, on here. Uh, Noel, a little problem. Little problem in the first run yesterday in curve one both times, but boy, you cleaned it up today. Yeah, I felt like I got in my own way yesterday, and today I was able to come in with a clear mind, and I felt great and laid down two good runs, and it's been just a great race with these women. Congratulations. Now, Shelly, uh, did you think it could be this dominating in this race, knowing where the practice went all week? No, no, not at all. I mean, I was training to train, and I, I try race to race, and uh, it went really well yesterday, and so it... I was a bit more relaxed coming into today, but I still didn't expect to win until it was over and things went well, so I'm happy. Happy time in Sheffield, huh? <laughs> well, congratulations to Shelley Rubman, mums and daughters on the podium. Sarah Reed feeling a little left out there, but she's got plenty of time for all of that. There is your world championship podium and the trophy for the first time ever being presented to the skeleton world champion, the brand new FIBT trophy. So congratulations indeed to our podium finishers. A great, great day for Shelley Rudman, her first ever World Championship gold medal ahead of Noel Pikers Pace and Sarah Reed. And don't forget that men's skeleton starts quite shortly. We've got the four-man bobsleigh as well this weekend. Lots more racing to come from Samaritz.